This instructional video will describe how to replace the seal assembly on Corkin's CoroFlow regenerative turbine pumps. This includes all C, DS, DL, and F model pumps. Please refer to the CoroFlow Installation, Operation, and Maintenance Manual, item number IF101, and Important Instructions for Seal Replacement, item number IF200, for detailed information on these pumps. These manuals may be downloaded from our website at corkin.com. Please note these important safety tips. Periodic inspection and maintenance of the pump is essential. Inspection, maintenance, and installation of the pump must be performed by trained personnel. All procedures must comply with the Corkin Installation Operation and Maintenance Manual, applicable local codes and safety standards. The transfer of toxic, flammable, or explosive substances is always at the user's risk. Equipment should only be operated by qualified personnel according to applicable codes and safety standards. Take the time to review the installation operation and maintenance manual and instructions before performing any maintenance procedures. The model and serial number of the pump is located on a nameplate on top of the pump casing. If there is not a nameplate on the unit, there is a stamped number on the cover and on the back of the casing that indicates the model number. This pump is a Model C12. 9 would be a Model 9, 0 is a Model 10, 2 a 12, 3 a 13, 4 a 14, and 5 is a Model 15. Note the direction of the rotation arrow on the front of the pump cover. This is important to know when installing a three-phase motor such as the one used on model C14 and all F, DS, and DL models. The motor can be wired to turn in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction, so make sure it is wired to match the direction of the rotation arrow when installing a new motor. This wiring instruction does not apply to the small C model motors of two horsepower or less, since they are wired to run one direction only. All standard CoroFlow regenerative turbine pumps use the seal replacement kit 113CXA. The letter at the end of the part number indicates the O-ring material. A is the standard configuration and indicates Buna N. Optional O-ring material is available and indicated with a B for neoprene, D for Viton, E for PTFE, G for ethylene propylene, and K for Calres. The boxed seal replacement kit includes an instruction manual, the stationary metal seat, the rotating carbon with the seal sleeve assembly and spring, the case cover o-ring, the rear housing o-ring, the follower and follower o-ring that seals to the shaft, the impeller woodruff key, the seal locking pin, the seal clamp ring and three screws, and a 2000s red and 3000s green cover shim for adjusting impeller clearance. The tools required for this procedure are a number two Phillips screwdriver, a number two flat screwdriver, a one half inch box wrench or half inch socket and ratchet, a flat metal file, a 12 inch adjustable wrench, an O-ring pick, diagonal or side cutting pliers, and 300 to 400 grit emery cloth and Scotch-Brite. You will also need a can of spray lubricant or light oil and plenty of clean shop towels. Before you begin servicing the pump, make sure the pump and system have been depressurized. The seal replacement is an easy procedure, so it's not necessary to remove the pump from the piping. Keep the work area, tools, and parts clean. Begin by removing the bolts from the pump cover with a half inch wrench or socket. If you can't remove the pump cover by hand, use the cover bolts in the bolt holes located at the three and nine o'clock position as pull or jacking bolts to help remove the cover. With the cover removed, note the number and color of shims used for impeller clearance. They will be discussed later in reassembly. This is the O-ring that seals the cover to the casing. Next, remove the impeller by pulling it off the shaft. If it is stuck, insert an existing bolt from the pump cover into one of the threaded pulling holes located on the impeller. Remove the impeller by pulling on the bolt. It's okay if there's some light scoring or scratches on the face of the impeller. As long as it can be shimmed for proper clearance, the impeller may be reused. However, if any fins are damaged or broken, it will need to be replaced. The matching model number is stamped on the back of the impeller as well. 
This is an example of an impeller that has discolored as a result of heat caused by dry running. The usual cause of seal failure and excessive impeller wear. This impeller is not damaged. As long as it can be shimmed for proper clearance, the impeller may be reused. Next, remove the woodruff key. With a pair of diagonal cutting pliers, grab the key firmly and slowly roll up. Do not drive the key out from the top with the screwdriver. You may bend the shaft, which will cause repetitive seal failure. Before you remove the seal clamp ring, prevent the pump shaft from rotating by inserting a screwdriver between the fan blades and through the fan guard at the rear of the motor. Remove the sleeve screws and clamp ring using the Phillips screwdriver. A magnetic screwdriver can make this a bit easier. Remove the screwdriver from the fan guard at the rear of the motor. To remove the locking pin, rotate the shaft so the locking pin is in the 6 o'clock position. Compress the seal assembly with your thumbs and the pin should drop out. A light press with the screwdriver may help if the seal assembly does not move back. Reach in with your fingers and remove the sleeve, follower, and follower o-ring. If there are any nicks or burrs on the shaft, removal may be difficult. Push the assembly back in and use emery cloth to smooth and polish the shaft. Repeat until the sleeve assembly slides out easily. After you remove the assembly, note the follower and follower o-ring. The o-ring is compressed by the follower when you tighten the seal clamp ring with the three screws. It is critical that the shaft is smooth and clean for a positive seal. To access the seal housing, remove the nameplate located at the top of the pump casing and insert a flat blade screwdriver in the opening. Pry the seal housing forward with the screwdriver and remove the housing from the pump. After the seal housing has been removed, locate and remove the shims behind the flange of the seal housing. Make sure no shims have stuck to the inside of the casing. Note the number of shims and set aside. These shims will be reused during reassembly and are critical for proper seal compression. Remove the metal stationary seat inside the seal housing by placing the seal housing face down on a flat work surface. Lightly tap the seat with a flat blade screwdriver until it drops out or using a small flat blade screwdriver, gently pry the seat, rotating the housing until the seal drops out. Clean the inside and outside of the seal housing with a spray lubricant or light oil and set aside. Polish with emery cloth if needed. Next, remove the rear casing o-ring with an o-ring pick. Clean the groove in the casing by rinsing with a spray lubricant. At this time, rotate the shaft with your fingers. If there is any roughness in the bearings or it slides in and out, the motor or frame bearing may need to be replaced. Before you reassemble the pump, now is a good time to clean the front of the casing and the back of the cover mating surfaces. Gently file or use an emery cloth to remove paint, rust, and dirt from the surfaces. Then, make sure you have cleaned all parts and surfaces with a spray lubricant or light oil. The first step of reassembly is to install the new O-ring in the back of the pump casing. Begin by feeding the O-ring into the groove and work it around with your fingers or a flathead screwdriver until it is fully seated. Spray with a light lubricant and wipe clean. Lubricating the O-ring will help with the installation of the seal housing. Next, install the new seal seat inside the seal housing. There is a locating pin in the back of the seal housing that must align with the notch in the back of the seal seat. To aid the installation process and prevent damage to the seal seat, we recommend using a plastic handle screwdriver. With the notch facing up, lubricate the seal seat with a light oil or spray lubricant and place on top of the plastic handle screwdriver. Place the seal housing over the seal seat and visually align the locking pin with the notch in the seal seat. Tap down the housing with the palm of your hand to secure the seat in the housing. If the pin is misaligned during the process, you may use a small screwdriver to align the notch of the seal seat with the pin. Again, tap the seal housing down with the palm of your hand to make sure the seal seat is secure. Reinstall all the metal shims that were removed during disassembly behind the flange of the seal housing. 
Slide the seal housing over the shaft and press into the pump casing. Make sure the seal housing slides through the o-ring and is seated to the back of the pump casing. To confirm the seal housing is seated completely, you may lightly tap the outer flange surface on the front of the seal housing with a screwdriver. Do not tap on the seal seat located inside the housing. The seal assembly will need to be assembled before it can be installed in the seal housing. Remove the carbon from the retainer and apply lubricant to the inner o-ring. Place carbon back on the retainer. Align notches on the retainer with locators on the spring seal assembly and press into place. Next, insert the follower o-ring and the follower into the seal sleeve. Make sure the follower notch aligns with the notch on the seal assembly. Before installing, clean and lubricate the shaft and surfaces again. Rotate the pump shaft until the locking pin location is at 12 o'clock. Insert a screwdriver into the fan guard to lock the shaft in place. Slide the seal assembly over the shaft and align the seal locking pin notch with the pin location on the shaft. Compress the seal assembly spring with both thumbs to expose the locking pin hole on the shaft. Install the locking pin into the hole on the pump shaft. Make sure it is seated in the locking pin notch on the seal assembly. There should be some clearance behind the pin when you compress the seal assembly and enough spring pressure to hold the pin in the notch on the seal assembly. Next, install the seal clamp ring with three screws using the Phillips screwdriver. A magnetic screwdriver is helpful if available. Install all three screws before tightening. Then tighten the screws evenly. Do not over tighten or break the screws. Remove the screwdriver from the fan guard and rotate the shaft until the shaft keyway is at the 12 o'clock position. Reinsert the screwdriver into the fan guard to secure the shaft. Align the woodruff or impeller key into the center of the shaft keyway. Using an adjustable wrench, apply pressure to the key by gently rocking the wrench up and down on the shaft while tightening the wrench. Continue until the key is firmly seated and flat in the keyway. Be careful not to damage or score the shaft. Now install the impeller. If the key has been properly installed, the impeller should slide smoothly on the shaft and go all the way to the back of the casing. Impeller side clearance or float is set with the 2000s red and the 3000s green cover shims. As the impeller wears, it may be necessary to remove one of the shims to obtain the proper clearance. If your pump has been in the field for a while, start the shimming process by installing the cover o-ring with the green shim only. Make sure the mating surfaces of the pump casing and the cover are perfectly clean. Adding a little lubricant will help hold the shim in place. Attach the pump cover, making sure the cork and name is level with the casing, and cross-tighten with four of the cover bolts. Rotate the shaft by inserting a screwdriver in the fan guard and rotating the fan blade. If the shaft does not spin freely with one green shim, add the red shim for additional clearance. In this case, the shaft spins freely with one green shim. Remove the pump cover and remove the green shim. Attach the pump cover, making sure the cork and name is level with the casing, and cross-tighten with four of the cover bolts. Rotate the shaft by inserting a screwdriver in the fan guard and rotating the fan blade. Now the shaft is locked and won't move. So, proper clearance in this example is with one green shim. Remove the pump cover and add back one green shim. Install and tighten the pump cover bolts evenly in a crisscross pattern. Rotate the pump several times to ensure there is no rubbing or binding and to align and seat the seal assembly. Now close and secure the nameplate on top of the pump casing. This completes the seal replacement procedure for all C, DS, DL, and F model Coral Flow regenerative turbine pumps. If the pump is going back into service, slowly pressurize with vapor. This can be accomplished by slowly opening the bypass return line on most systems. 
If the pump is placed into short or long-term storage, close all openings and partially fill the pump with some light oil to protect against rust and corrosion. For intermittent duty, the frame bearings generally require lubrication every three months. However, continuous duty operations may require monthly lubrication. Corkin recommends only using an MILG 10924C ball bearing grease with a temperature rating of negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Please refer to the troubleshooting section of the CoraFlow Installation Operation and Maintenance Manual, item number IF101, for detailed information. This manual may be downloaded from the literature section of our website at corkin.com. For more information on Corkin's products and applications, visit our website and join us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube.